Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hard for Games channel. We are your hosts, I'm Tony. And I'm John. Today, what are we looking at, sir? We have the Bung Doctor V64 by Bung Enterprises Limited. Sometimes known as the Doctor V64. Sometimes known as the V64. Sometimes known as the Bung Doctor 64, which sounds like a practitioner of the art and science of proctology. It is an N64 peripheral and development unit that we're going to dive right up into. The Bung Doctor 64 is a third party development system for the N64, and it kind of solved an issue being that first party development systems were and are. Oh yeah, expensive. expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so this unit here, when it originally came out, uh, retailed around 400, 450. I've heard both. Right. Uh, I don't know exactly how much N64 first party kits sold for, but I would guess in the thousands. Oh yeah, yeah I would I, guess at least. Well, I mean, a lot of those, uh, especially early on, are like final production prototype sort of stuff, where mm -hmm. not everything's made as cheaply as possible. It's low production runs for them, mm. so you don't get the uh, uh, added cost savings of mass production. So yeah, exactly. yeah having a little one-off weirdo thing to fill that gap. It's a really nice thing, and and you to, also have to, to keep fill in your mind, bung. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, you also have to keep in mind that not only do you have a lower production run of the development consoles compared to the retail consoles, but you also have Nintendo being like, so you want to produce games on the N64. Yeah. We're desperate for third party titles, but why don't you pay up? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you pay ups? I'm just assuming that Nintendo were assholes because of their history. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, but <laughs> hey. oh, shit, Tony, do you see that? I think we just got a cease and desist for Aww. talking about them. Basically, this goes right on top, kind of like Ooh, the Voltron. N64 disk drive. Uh, this expansion port in the back here is basically just another cartridge port. So you plug this into the cartridge port, you plug a little adapter, and then a regular retail cartridge on top, and basically... You bypass the lockout. Exactly. So what the, what the adapter does is it allows you to bypass the lockout chip. So with everything plugged in on both ends, the N64 doesn't know which way is up and doesn't really know that there's anything wrong happening. It's kind of the lucky peer of the situation, if you will. So development-wise, what you could do with this thing is via a parallel port, connect to your PC, and you could bring in builds of your game into this unit and then take data and push it out to the PC. Or alternately, you could burn a build of your game uh, and then play it on the built-in CD-ROM drive. Now, if you've ever emulated an N64, you probably are aware of the suffixes V64 and Z64. So, of course, the V64 comes from the files made from this thing here. The Z64 is from the Mr. Backup Z64, which essentially is a peripheral that allows you to backup N64 titles to a zip disk. So the Z in Z64, I'm assuming, is for zip. I like how they all had to add uh, a random consonant in front of it. It was the 90s. All right, so let's walk you around the Dr. V64. So I think you're all familiar with a CD drive, the play, the eject button, volume knob, headphone jack, because it's just a standard PC CD drive, but it's got a previous, a next, a stop, a play, a chapter select, a menu button, fast reverse and fast forward button, plus its own dedicated power button. So you can tell that this was meant for an international market because it has both a NTSC and PAL selectable switch there, but unusual for stuff at this time, it has an output and an input for composite video. And you might think that's an S-video jack there, and it is that sort of mini DIN with the exact same size, shape, and looks like pinout, but that's the DC input to power this. 
So uh, be careful with that cable if you ever buy one of these. Don't uh, destroy any of your stuff with it. And it's got this nice D-Sub 25 printer PC computer uh, serial port there. You can see the nice little sticker here for the Bung Dr. V64 trademark. Bung Enterprises Limited. It's got model number DV64-01. It's got a serial number. And they didn't even have to tell me that it was made in Hong Kong because they already misspelled patent. And it just says patent pending. Although I'll probably end up finding out that's the correct way to say it. And everybody will point it out in the comments. And I'll find out that's wrong. And I'll feel like a butt. A bung. A bung. And if you're wondering what's over here, if I carefully, carefully remove this little thing, see that there's some expandable little memory modules that uh, you have to be very careful removing this because they will actually touch them. So we're gonna go ahead and take a tour of the menu. Just so everybody knows, when you plug in a Bung Doctor 64, it is a mess of cords because yeah. there's actually two- You need a second screen. <laughs> Pretty much. There's, there, you utilize two displays. One is for the Bung Doctor V64 and one is for the actual N64. Now we're focusing on the menu right now, so we have that one front row and center. Some of the content here is how to transfer data to and from your PC. Some of it is diagnostic, so for example, there is a V64 self-test. It's verifying all the DRAM. All right, it's good. Send a key to return. Which is good, because I worried I'd bumped some stuff when I showed you guys that little door. <laughs> Upload DRAM data to PC. Fix CRC code, run game, show mm -hmm. game name in DRAM, upload V64 BIOS to PC. Again, we don't have a PC that we have this hooked into, so we can't really showcase the full functionality, nor do we really understand it because we're not developers. Yeah. Uh, but just wanted to kind of showcase that this exists. So here it is. Now, two of the other features that this has is that it can play like pretty much everything back in the day. Music CDs and also video CDs. Ooh. Now, I was gonna treat you to a couple of our old high school movies that I had burned to video CD because this was before DVD was a thing. And I tried three or four of them and none of them worked. My speculation is either that because it is like maybe such an old CD. I mean, I burned this thing in like 2002. Like, it, the, probably the data is bad on it by now. It could be that, or it could be, like, that it's exceptionally picky with its video format, like, yeah. resolution. Could be that it only plays video CDs that were burned professionally. Could be. I don't know. That was a very brief thing. But supposedly, it plays video CDs we just can't show you today. But it does play music CDs. So I actually have the soundtrack for Legend of Mana. I figured that I could kind of have this in the background and hopefully not get a copyright strike from YouTube. I don't know. I, I figured if it was like Bowie or Prince or something like that, I would be screwed for sure. But uh, just you shut your mouth. Last but not least, of course, it can play N64 ROMs from CD. So we actually have the beta of Turok 3. This was sent to us, and it was a, it's available online, but this was sent yeah. to us along with the Bung Doctor 64 from Andrew. So thank you, sir. We certainly appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. Basically, we just go ahead and press play, and then it loads the parameter error. Oh, that's my favorite game. <laughs> Did you take the disc out or? What's... No, let's try it again. Let's, there oh, we there go. There it is, okay. so, Sometimes it's a little bit uh, finicky. Yeah. And it does look a bit like something out of the Matrix with that weird like green Yeah, it's like flicker. Flicker. Yeah. And like there's a little bit of like sync wobbliness. Yep. It might just be there's a couple caps and this one that need a swap. Yeah. But it almost looks like we're playing this footage from VHS because it's like, oh, 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 oh. So you can see here it's loading at megabit by megabit. It's going to go all the way up to 256 megabits, which was 32 megabytes. And we had already covered this in a separate video. All of you people in the comments saying Germany. megabyte, not megabit. 
No. We showed you guys dumped versions of yes. ROMs, the exact file size they were, and megabit is yeah. correct. So here's the interesting thing here is that the V64 outputs its own video, and now it's stored the information from the CD into its RAM. So now you just turn on the N64, and this is now treated like a cartridge, and it plays what? here. And the N64 has its own video out, as you can see. The Acclaim sub company, Iguana, that developed the Turok games actually utilized the Bong 64, so it's kind of like a poetic thing that we're playing this today on the Bong Dr. 64, especially it being sort of a, uh, a debug or a beta version, I believe. So John, realistically, is there any reason to purchase this machine nowadays? Well, if you want to load ROMs and various like experimental ROMs and stuff like this onto a 64, there's several good options for flash carts for that mm. sort of thing. For actually using it uh, in the modern day, it's kind of ass backwards. And yeah. Weird. Like you said, there are, there are better ways to play ROMs it's on actual hardware, ways. and there are better ways to develop for the N64 nowadays. Yes. So realistically, if you're going to be purchasing one of these, which is multiple hundreds of dollars, I think it's like four or five hundred bucks or something like that, I can't remember. Which is... Uh, uh, it's a lot. 200, 300 more than a very nice flashcard. Yeah, so I mean, realistically, it's something that you would purchase to put on the shelf and have it be a conversation piece with yep. your collector friends. And that's basically what it's good for. It's a collector's piece with some nice historicity that has some neat functionality that you can get much easier nowadays. That said, big thank you again to Andrew for letting us borrow this. We certainly appreciate it. Again, once again, shipping some really expensive stuff across the US <laughs> over to Michigan to uh, allow us to showcase to all of you. So thank you again. And other than that, we appreciate you guys watching. Uh, thank you for subscribing, ringing that bell, all that good stuff. And a one quick announcement. We are having a meet and greet at Retro Taco Video Games. 507 West 11 Mile Road, Madison Heights, Michigan. That's right. Right next to the Cottage Inn Pizza. Uh -huh. We'll get some za, and uh, it's going to be on September 8th. So it's going to be a good time. We have some prizes for the first 20 people that show up. We're going to be hanging out, talking to you guys. It's going to be a good time. So show up if you can. And uh, second notification, actually, now that I think about it, is that we were doing a live podcast every other Sunday, and the Sundays in between, releasing the highlights of the previous Sunday. So check it out, Hard for Games Guide and Live. Hey, what's this, John? Um, what does that say? Boom. Fake news kofefe. I know little and less, but soon we'll know much and more. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.